Hello, I'm Seth with Land House, and this is a ram pump. It's a water pump that requires no fuel or electricity to operate, only flowing, falling water. A question that I'm asked quite often is, will the ram pump work underwater? And the answer is yes, it will. A few years ago, I tested out a, a large ram pump underwater, and it worked. But the secret is, the water source has to come from above where the pump is located. So in my previous test, I had the pump down in a little pond, and then the pond above it was feeding the ram pump. That's the catch. So if you put this into a lake, it's just not gonna work. But in this video, I wanna find out what's the benefit of running the ram pump underwater. So let me show you my setup and we will get started. I've got a bucket here filled to the top with water, coming down a three quarter inch drive pipe, now I know this is gonna have a lot of inefficiency from bounce, but we're just trying to test out underwater uh, ram pump here. So comes down basically about three feet of head pressure into this little uh, pond. What I'm gonna do is a couple of things. I'm gonna hook up the ram pump and test out whether it works underwater or not. And then I'm gonna use this pressure gauge to find out what pressure it builds up to with about a minute and a half of operation, uh, depending on how much water it's gonna be using, maybe more like a minute. And then I'm gonna use this delivery pipe to come up to the top of this little structure here and uh, see a flow rate based on no water versus water. So our first test, I'm just gonna be hooking this up here into the dry pond and we will run our tests and get our values, and then we'll come back with this thing full to the top and get our values again. Test one is gonna be for pressure. I'm gonna go ahead and open the drive pipe. Fill this thing up. Need to make sure that there is no air in the line. I can hear it bubbling over here. Okay, the drive pipe is air free and we're starting at this point right here. Let's go ahead and get this primed and I will start the timer and we'll see what we get here. So as soon as this thing begins to prime, all right, we'll start the timer. Let this go for one minute and we'll see what our pressure builds up to. Now, typically I should be able to get somewhere between uh, 15 and 20 PSI in this setup. Um, now, remember this is a closed delivery pipe, so uh, it may actually be a good bit more than that. But um, these two 90s here make this system very inefficient, and the, uh, the non-supported drive pipe also makes it less efficient. 35 seconds. All right, there we go at one minute. Stop that, stop that. Let's read our pressure gauge down here and see what we get. So maybe difficult for you to see, but it is at 32 PSI down there after one minute of operation. So let's remember 32 PSI. Okay, data point number two, bucket is full again. Drive pipe, of course. This time I have the delivery pipe going up to the top of this structure and comes back down to this little container. So I'm gonna time for one minute and see what kind of water volume we get in that one minute time. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and uh, start the timer. We may have a back pressure issue. Not only a back pressure issue, but a siphoning issue. <laughs> it was just siphoning straight on through the pump and out here. So I guess what I have to do is pull this back a little bit and uh, just have it free fall here. I just need to be quick to, uh, to come back and, and start capturing the water. Okay, let's try this. Delivery pipe comes back up the structure here and then to this point right here. So hopefully it will maintain a back pressure and not start a siphon. Let's see what we get here. Okay.
very strong flow rate at this level. All right, there we have it. So what I'm gonna do here with this bucket is use a Sharpie and say that this level right here is uh, not under. Okay, the next step is to fill this little pond up with water. My storage tanks from my ram pump up the hill have about 100 gallons, so not sure how long it's going to take. I also placed a rock here because I'm pretty sure that this pump is going to try and float. So let's just give this a while until it is uh, full up to the top. I now have my little pond full of water as best I can. It's kind of on the slope here. So it's time to turn on the delivery pipe and see what kind of results we get as far as pressure on this first test. Now, before I get started with this, remember I have four different size ram pumps available at landhouse.com and on Amazon. Links in the description down below. Okay, so the plan is to turn on this valve and start the timer just like before. So I'm going to reach down here. Okay, let's get a couple of primes in here. Okay, all right, we're going. I'm glad that started, or this would have been a really uneventful video. But as you can see, it is working quite nicely underwater. It's quite a snap it's got going on here in the drive pipe. Okay, and that's time. Go ahead and stop that. Let's see if I can read the pressure gauge down in here. Okay, I doubt you can see that from the glare, but what I'm reading is it's only at 24 PSI. So, it is actually significantly reduced pressure than it was before almost by 10 PSI. Okay, let's go reset our bucket and get our flow rate test. Okay, time to get this thing going uphill and we'll see what kind of flow we get out at the top. Go ahead and get this primed before I start the stopwatch. There we go. Okay, let's head over here to the output and see what we get. Still quite a nice stream flowing through there, which is a good sign, but is it the same as before? 30 seconds. Okay, and time. Go ahead and make sure this is stopped here. Hey look, we finally overflowed the, the tub. Okay, so what do we have up here? To be honest with you, that is really, really close. Probably the difference between whether or not the uh, delivery pipe was fully primed or not. Uh, so I am actually satisfied that that is equal with the previous test there. So our results were, whenever this was empty, it had 32 PSI and it had just ever so slightly more water on the output volume. Whenever it's full, it had 24 PSI, which is eight less, and it supplied basically the same amount of water at the top. So I'm not exactly sure why the pressure was different, but the volume output was the same. Uh, could have been some variation in my test setup. But um, I think it pretty much shows that 
yes, the pump will work underwater and it works well enough, I do believe. So further testing might be required with a higher delivery pipe to see if it actually does decrease as the, uh, the height goes up with the underwater pump. But for now, I would like to uh, go ahead and just conclude that um, it's great. Go ahead and put your pump underwater if you need to. I have a feeling that the only real benefit to putting the pump underwater is if you have a larger creek and you need to have the pump underwater just to maintain your head pressure. But also, having the pump underwater can reduce the sound that the check valve makes whenever it clicks. I don't know if you heard or not, but you could still hear the pressure wave going back and forth in the drive pipe, but the valve itself didn't have that iconic click, um, which I can actually uh, show you again real quick here. Let's go ahead and close the uh, delivery totally, um, which means it's gonna hit a little bit hard, but we can still get a decent sound in here. So that's not the sound of the valve, that's the sound of the drive pipe popping against the side of this uh, little pond. But you can still hear the noise that the drive pipe makes as it cycles. Okay, I think that's pretty much going to conclude this underwater ram pump test. Thank you so much for watching. If you have some ideas about how to further test this pump or improve the results that I've already got here, be sure to write those down in the comments below. And if you haven't already, thumbs up on this video if you love ram pumps. And I would really appreciate it if you would go ahead and subscribe. I have over a hundred videos on the ram pump with various tests and well over a thousand videos on the channel. So subscribe, ring that notification bell for updates, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.